Hello, welcome back to Primary Teaching with Dom. So in this video, we're going to talk about pay. <laughs> we're going to talk about NQTs and what you come in with. So basically, the question is, do all NQTs have to start on M1? So like the lower pay, the lower range of the pay score, and that is absolutely not. So let's get on the video and how you can change it. So this is not necessarily something I've done. Um, although I kind of wish I did because you know everything the time but it's not something I've done but I've heard many people that have done it um, and I've been to kind of meetings and kind of, what do they call it um, like that like meetings basically but this was like pre-COVID this was like a year nearly a year ago now no I'm lying to you nearly two years ago at this point so you know this is pre-COVID this is when we could actually meet up in, <laughs> in big places but I know that some people who started on the NQT got on to M3 m2 i haven't heard of m4 but definitely m2 and i've heard of m3 in a in a rare case so yeah i've heard of that so this is how you can kind of do it so everyone seems to assume that when you start your nqt you're always going to start on m1 or you should start on m1 and that's not the case so you've got to kind of delegate and know not all schools will do it to be honest not all schools accept it but it's up to you it depends on the kind of person you are if you're if you feel comfortable with asking with asking the school that you know <clears throat> when you're kind of in like the negotiation phase, if you want to call it that, saying that I technically don't want to start on M1, I want to start on M2, then that is fine. However, you can't just randomly just go, I want to start on M2. There has to be reason behind it. So here's some of the reasons that you can do. So one reason is that with all, like you've had exceptional, you've had, not exceptional, you've had so much experience, you've done this, you've done that, you've become this and you were like a high level TA and you've done this course and you've done that and you've had so much experience in the classroom that you know that you can you can bring so much wealth to the school kind of thing because of everything that you've done and you've led this and done that that you just don't feel that m1 would be the place you start because you just got so much kind of you know knowledge kind of behind you that you think that you should start on m2 or m3 that's fine it just depends on the school as i said the school can decline it and say look sorry we don't do that here you know you have to start on m1 or some schools will accept it but what you don't want, if you are that person that has some loads of experience and done so much before you did your PGCE, and I'm not necessarily just talking, I'm talking more about in teaching. So if you were like a higher level TA or you were a TA and you've done this and you've done a lot of send, like it's a lot of send work and done all of that for quite a few time, you've got just loads of experience, then I don't see why you wouldn't want to ask. I don't think it would be something bad against you. I don't think it would not give you a job just because, unless you say to them, look, I am not staying here unless I get, if you just say like, I, I've got all this experience and here it is all laid out on the table, and I personally feel that I should be able to start on M2 or M3 because of my experience, then so be it. I, if, as I said, if you are that kind of person that has all that and you are not shy in asking, then I feel that you should ask in all your, all your, um, you know, meetings or, you know, if you go to see the school or your um, actual interview, if you're not scared to do it. I know there might be quite a few people that are scared to because they don't want, you know, to be a negative perception that they're just gr money, like grabbing for money and all of that. But, as, but in one video that you will see come up in the next couple weeks, two, three, four weeks or so, progression is what loads people want um or what quite a few people would like to see themselves you know progressing in their in their career so i don't see why you wouldn't um as i said there are some schools that just won't allow it some schools saying that you've got to start on m1 like everyone else and you work your way up year by year but don't be don't be scared to you don't need to start on m1 and to be honest if you and i feel that i i know one person that they were they got onto m2 or m3 because they there weren't a lot of people doing their subject and the school really kind of needed you know people to come in to support that kind of teach it and because of that they were able to get what they wanted if that makes sense but the the worst the worst thing that you can do is if you are a negotiator if you're that kind of person to negotiate and you don't negotiate and then you regret it after do i regret not negotiating noise not necessarily no because i just don't i did have quite a lot of experience per se I, I i did do quite a lot of stuff however um i i i just didn't ask it just wasn't something that was on my brain there's not something that i knew of and i didn't know a lot of people that did it but now 
being in teaching for three years or so, I have heard of people do it successfully. And yeah, so it's definitely something that you can do. Don't just think that you've got to start on M1. You can start on M2, M3. Don't know about M4. I think M4 is probably pushing it, but uh, you can start on those. you just got to know your work really, isn't it? And you've just got to ask the schools. Don't be afraid to ask them. Because if you're afraid to ask, you're afraid to ask for everything. So just ask them if you really feel that you want to. But that's for all the NQTs or PGC people, all the people that are thinking of going into teaching. I'm thinking, oh, oops, I'm thinking about it. Um, it's all there, but you don't actually need to start on M1. <laughs> that is the crux of it. Um, if you have limited amount of teaching experience, and I would, I don't necessarily think that they would accept it, especially in primary schools where there's quite a few teachers going for jobs anyway, and maybe more in secondary school where where the retention of getting the teachers in for those subjects is a bit harder. So like physics or maths or citizenship, those kind of ones maybe that they'll be more lenient in giving you the um, higher wages from the very beginning just because they really want great teachers in and they want to kind of lock you in kind of thing but i've heard it in primary so don't be discouraged if is if that's not the case if you're if you're not secondary or prone but primary you can still do it but anyway that's the video but what if my fingers lift and it did